Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. RDNA 4 is coming. I want to talk to you guys about some very interesting updates which are happening in the land of GPUs. I want to talk to you about some patch notes concerning RDNA 4, a couple of small updates concerning the architecture. Then we're going to shift our attention to RTX 40. So let's start things out with what almost is certainly Nave 44 and 48 now being essentially acknowledged by Linux. So Linux, of course, receives various patches for LLVM, etc., etc., and one of those is basically stating GFX 1200 and 1201 is now being added in the patch notes, and the developer is actually highlighting the target names. Now, if you're unfamiliar, let me just give you some context. GFX 11 is the RDNA 3 family, so of course this would mean something like the Radeon RX 7900. On the other hand, GFX 1200 would of course be RDNA 4, which would be RX 8000 series, presumably, unless AMD has decided to do something kind of screwy with the naming schemes, which, I mean, it's possible, but I think at this point, from what I've heard anyway, it is going to be the Radeon RX 8000 series. So, define new targets, GFX 1200 as well as GFX 1201. JFode, hopefully I pronounced that correctly, also adds a comment which says define target names and ELF numbers for new GFX 12 targets and GFX 1201, uh, GFX 1201 as well as 1200. For now, they behave identically to GFX 11. Now, these are early patches. So, at the end of the day, this is not, well, let's say final. But you can also see there are a couple of reviewers here as well. And one of those individuals clearly works at AMD because, well, it's literally in their name. Now, I've been mentioning in a couple of videos now, Nave 44 as well as 48 Everest or Ulrac 29 underscore on Twitter has had a pretty good track record. They've leaked a variety of different bits and pieces online, for example, block diagrams before and con uh, configurations for various RDNA GPUs. And they believe as well that it is actually Nave 44 as well as 48. Also in a Twitter thread they mentioned that there seems to be some differences regarding the work group processor layout. I'm going to try to get a bit more information here. Uh, in my previous video I did mention that there does seem to be some changes across the GPU. Um, one of those seems to be that the way the ray tracing units are functioning. Now, it's not quite the same thing as NVIDIA, but I have heard there are some big changes. And let's try to do a bit more digging. Honestly, a couple of my sources who gave me some information, they're being a little cagey at the moment, but I'm sure they'll open up eventually. Um, at the end of the day, sometimes when information starts to disseminate, it does take a while before they can release information because otherwise information just becomes too easy to trace. In other words, it's just the simple thing that if only like five employees, obviously it's a bit of an exaggeration, but if only let's say five employees at AMD know something, it doesn't take exactly that much investigative work to figure out, well, it's probably one of these five you know, people. On the other hand, if it's now starting to disseminate to more people, more companies outside of AMD and so on, then obviously it becomes a bit harder to track. But yeah, I have heard some things that RDNA 4 does definitely have some changes. I've already, of course, leaked some of those and I've spoken about them at length before, like the SALU changes. I've heard there are also some adjustments to the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Geometry engine. And obviously, again, I've spoken about the um, ray tracing performance increases, which I've heard are somewhere between 10 and 30% currently. Although, again, we are referring, of course, to unfinal silicon and also non-final, well, let's just say software. So, obviously, there is still room left in the tank. Plus, of course, developers could release a patch or optimization, that type of thing, which would improve performance. Just to reiterate what I said in a previous video, I would encourage you guys to check that out because I go into a lot more detail regarding N44 and 48 and a lot of context regarding Intel's Battle Mage as well. There's a lot of stuff there. But in essence, we are looking at a GPU, which is essentially going to be on par, and I'm referring here to the highest end SKU, with roughly speaking the 7900 GRE. There are some caveats. It will, of course, depend upon the different application that you're running. But uh, yeah, it seems that uh, in essence, RDNA 4, of course, the high end has gotten canned, but... We are looking at a monolithic die, which is going to be relatively small. It's going to be relatively cheap to produce. 
and at the end of the day it is going to be pretty performant um, I am also hearing that um, N31 does receive some type of refresh, although I'm getting some mixed information exactly what the refresh is. One person is insinuating that there are some actual changes to the GPU um, that I'm speaking to, but another one who gave me the information originally says it's probably not. It's basically just the same thing. It's basically just a rename. So I'm not quite sure what is going on there. I'm telling you both variants of the news because I'm not sure which one it is. And then obviously I'll try to drill down and let you know the actual you know truth when I know it better. But um, yeah, uh, basically the highest end N31 SKU is still going to probably be more performant than the highest end RDNA SKU, which is kind of weird. But um, obviously that is not in reference to ray tracing. So we could have the situation where N31 is faster in raster, but ray tracing RDNA 4 does better. And of course, as always with this stuff, it does also depend upon the application, that type of thing. Some applications may simply do better with RDNA 4, and some may simply do, well, not so well. Um, I also want to talk to you guys about RTX 4070 and 4080. Now, this is a few days old now. Um, but I just want to mention it again because I also have a small update. So basically speaking, as I'm sure everyone and their mother at this point knows, RTX 40 is going to receive a refresh. I'm not going to tread over old ground here. It's basically the same architecture that we currently have, albeit the differences are, of course, changes in, let's say, the number of CUDA cores, uh, you know, some tweaks here and there regarding clock frequencies, memory configuration, etc., etc. There's not really anything to speak about there that we haven't about a billion times at this point. What is interesting, though, is that it seems that RTX 4070 Ti as well as the 4080 are going to be killed. Now, again, that's not new information. In fact, I may have already spoken about this in a previous video. Um, and it doesn't really make exactly many eyebrows raise. Like... The market just wouldn't really bear having like a 4080 as well as a 4080 Super as well as all the other cards that we know about, in essence, because NVIDIA wants to probably put some price cuts in as well. The older GPUs just basically need to, well, pretty much disappear. But what I'm also hearing is that the 4070 isn't going anywhere. Now, this was, I believe, originally posted by video cards. But yeah, that does seem to be essentially what is going on. So I did see that on video cards as Twitter. And at the time, which is a couple of days ago, yeah, I'm just double checking. Um, so this was the 21st. Now, uh, on Twitter, I actually responded to video cards and I did say that that seems to be correct. The AIB um, that I was speaking to also pretty much told me the same thing. Now, it's not 100% because at the end of the day, it was only one AIB and one representative I was speaking to. So they can receive misinformation, stuff like that can happen. But it does seem like it's very likely that the 4070 isn't going anywhere. So instead, um, basically some SKUs, for example, the 4080 are gonna be going bye-bye. And again, we're gonna see a number of new cards which are gonna launch. As for RTX 50, which I'm sure most of you are probably more interested in, um, well, I put out a video about that uh, a couple of days ago, and I would encourage you guys to check it out, but it seems that NVIDIA are going to be doing some type of, I guess you could say split flagship launch, which is going to probably be end-ish of next year. So if you're watching this in like seven years time, well, that's going to be the end of 2024, potentially, maybe early 2025. And then there's possibly going to be a new version, which launches like up to a year later, depending on the timings of everything. Um, essentially to try to take on RDNA 5's high-end GPUs. So it's going to be a very interesting one for NVIDIA um, over the next couple of years. There are a lot of interesting developments in general at the moment, of course, on technology. Um, obviously, one of the big things that we're seeing is just data center. Um, there is, let's just say, a lot of money that NVIDIA are making at the moment in the data center. High-performance computing, artificial intelligence. But there are also some warning signs for that. Um, to be honest, I haven't done enough research to know fully what the implications are going to be. But a couple of people I'm speaking to, kind of investors, are saying that uh, VC, venture capital, just seems a little, let's say, concerned about stuff. And it's going to be interesting to see what happens with that over the next while. With that said, I think that's just about it for this particular video, guys. Um, as I said, just a quick update. 
Um, as a small aside, I will also be launching a new YouTube channel over the next uh, several days. I'm not exactly certain when. I've recorded one video already. It is not going to impact RGT at all, so it will be an entirely separate thing. It is not going to be so much tech focused, although there will be discussions on retro video games, that type of stuff. But uh, it's also going to be fitness, health, cooking, you know, a lot of stuff actually, to be honest with you. Um, so when it goes live, of course, I will probably do a formal announcement on the channel, but just letting you guys know. With that said, stay safe, have an amazing day. Bye for now.